let's get in the mindset of a threat actor. And in the mindset of a threat actor, we're going to talk about IPv4 and IPv6 attacks. That's all contained here in IP attacks. Now, IP, or Internet Protocol, does not validate whether the source IP address that's seen in a packet is actually the legit, real source IP address for this message. Because of this, our threat actors can send packets using a spoofed source IP address. They can put whatever source IP they want in the message. Security analysts must understand the different fields that exist in both IPv4 and in our IPv6 headers. So let's dive deeper into IPv4 and IPv6 attacks. And first, let's hit ICMP attacks. We're going to cover this in more detail in just a little bit. But threat actors are going to use our ICMP messages, which are our echo packets with the pings themselves, to discover subnets and hosts on networks. They can also use ICMP attacks to generate denial of service floods. They can even use these things to alter the host routing tables of a targeted device. With amplification and reflection attacks, our threat attackers are going to prevent legitimate users from gaining access to info or to even use network services by using denial of service and distributed denial of service attacks. With spoofing attacks, a threat actor can spoof the source IP on a packet. We mentioned this. We can see this with blind spoofing or we can see this with non-blind spoofing. To put more insult to injury, an attacker can be part of a man-in-the-middle attack. They would position themselves directly between a source and destination to transparently monitor, to capture, and to even control the communication, which is all network traffic moving between a source and destination. With session hijacking, a threat actor can try to gain access to the physical network and then use a man-in-the-middle attack to not just watch a session, but to actually hijack a session and become the quote, legitimate user in the conversation. So we dive deeper then into ICMP attacks themselves. And threat actors are going to use ICMP attacks for recon and for scanning. Now this is commonly used for gathering information. They want to map out the network topology. They want to discover which hosts are actually active and reachable. They can even use these attacks to identify the host operating system known as fingerprinting. You can even see the service pack that they're being used. These ICMP attacks can also determine the state of a firewall and what is able to be reached and reached through. Now, threat actors don't just use discovery with ICMP. They can also use ICMP itself for denial service attacks and distributed denial service attacks. And our networks should have strict ICMP ACLs deployed to filter ICMP traffic on the network edge and throughout the network topology where it should not be allowed. Now, ICMP attacks themselves have a variety of different, let's say, uses, but commonly it's going to be for host verification as well as denial of service. And that's usually the ICMP echo request and the echo reply, which is the standard echo messages you have with a ping message. With ICMP unreachable messages, we can use these to perform network recon and scanning attacks. With mask reply, we can try to map an internal IP network. With redirects, we try to lure a targeted device into sending all of its traffic through a compromised device that then utilizes a man-in-the-middle attack. And with router discovery, we try to inject bogus route entries into the actual routing table of a targeted host. Just imagine the outgoing possibilities of a targeted host having bogus route entries inside of it. Now we'd like to talk about what's the real use in tools, and here is one of them. Low Orbit Ion Cannon. This is an older tool that's still been useful. There's a variety of flavors of it now. We have X over IC, High Orbit Ion Cannon, and there's even some more advanced tools like Hulk, but that goes more to the application layer and not so much here at Layer 3. But with tools such as Low Orbit Ion Cannon, they even allow you to connect your client to an IRC server and remotely control your Low Orbit Ion Cannon client. Pretty much this is installing a voluntary botnet that you're able to then utilize with zombies to do low orbit ion cannon. Now we're not endorsing this tool. This is only for ethical and legal purposes for use for things like research. 